I am your host, Arthur Schaefer, and I'm back again with another wonderful, wonderful guest that's going to be joining us shortly. We have Amara Prince, who is a health and life coach and the owner at Principality. And without further ado, let's bring her out. Amara, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. So why don't you tell our audience a little bit about yourself and what it is that you do? Sure. So I'm a life and health coach. So what I do is I help people set goals and intentions as to what they want to achieve in their life, uh, their relationships, maybe their confidence level, um, maybe their health goals could be, you know, with weight or exercise goals, stuff like that. And so um, I help them to achieve what they're looking to with that and how they want to feel in their life and so that they can get to where they want to be. Beautiful. And I love that you said be where you want to be. Uh, with you know the holidays coming up and New Year's right around the corner, can we talk a little bit about New Year's resolutions? Yeah, actually, that would be great. It's the perfect time. I know Christmas is this week, but you know the week the week between Christmas and New Year's is the perfect time to start thinking about what you're gonna start your year as, so you can start it out strong. So um, what I like to talk about is how to start. New Year, set New Year's resolutions so that they will succeed. So you'll succeed. Um, we've all been there. You set your resolution, anticipating a happy, successful year, and then a few weeks later, you're not thinking, you're not feeling so successful, and you lose motivation. Maybe you want to give up. So I've got some really good tips on how to do that and how to succeed. Um, awesome. Yeah. Um, I have a question. So what is the best way to you know pinpoint something you like to bring into the new year? You know, what is a good way of starting off or creating a goal that you think is going to be motivational, uh, impactful towards your life? Yeah, so, you know, the way I like to approach it is actually very different from a lot of people. I don't suggest you saying, okay, I want to lose 15 pounds or setting a list of tasks to complete that might seem overwhelming. I actually love to do something where we actually pick a theme word instead. So you pick a word for the year and then you apply all the things, all the actions that you do to that word. So an example of that might be um, a, a word might be balance. Say I want more balance in my life. Then everything that I do throughout the year, I start, I think, okay, um, with my family, the choices I make with my family, how can I have more balance? I can, you know, take more time with each of the kids, or I can make sure that I'm um, scheduling time off of work to be able to have more downtime, um, or I can make sure that I'm scheduling into my exercise so that I'm having balance with my physical health as well. So um, balance, you could apply that word to your diet as well. So, you know, how can I eat a balanced meal? And so I really love it, um, picking a word for the year, and I call it my theme word for the year. And what that does is it really helps you to feel into your goal. And what happens when you do that is people actually accomplish more than they ever would have set out if they had just given themselves a big to-do list. And with sustaining a goal, what is also important? You know, that's a really good question as well. Um, to, su to sustain a goal, you really need to know exactly what it is you're after in life. You really want to be clear as to what activities you're going to want to achieve to be able to have that. You want to have, keep a list um, close by. You want to have it a visual. So one of the things that I suggest you do is make a vision board. To make a vision board, what you want to do with that is you want to just sort of pick your theme word, put it in the middle, of, you know, get a big, a big poster board, put it on the middle, and then put a bunch of pictures, actual images of what it is that you want. So you know, if, if your word is, is balanced, for example, you know, put, you know, a bunch of pictures of really balanced meals on there that look really good. Um, put exercise on there to help you remember to have balance with your exercise. Maybe have pictures of yoga on there to help you remember that you want to balance your, your spiritual spirituality in there. Um, and so what happens when you put a vision board up is it helps you to have your, to visualize what it is that you're trying to achieve this year. And it's a really good reminder. And it, what it does is it activates our creative right brain and gets things going as well. So we click a little bit more to the goals that we set. Um, some other things to do would be um, 
infuse the elements of your goals into your everyday life. So don't, you know, forget about it. Like, oh, okay, next month I'll do this or that. So find little ways every single day to be able to do a little, one little thing towards your goal. We don't have to do huge things, just little bits at a time. And suddenly you're, you're there, you've achieved the goal. Interesting. So I know for a lot of people, you know, New Year's resolution usually has a lot to do with the way they look at themselves and the way they feel about themselves. So a lot of people make New Year's resolutions to lose weight. And mm-hmm. say, if you don't feel like going to the gym, I guess an alternate method um, would just to be work out at home, correct? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I think the biggest thing is um, really tap into yourself and what what motivates you to do that. So if your goal is to lose weight, first of all, don't f- hyper focus on the numbers, focus on how you want to feel in your body. So, you know, I want to feel alive, I want to feel energy, I want to feel vibrant. And so if that's the case, then don't if you don't enjoy weightlifting, then you know, but you do enjoy cardio, um, do a dance workout instead. You know, it's something that you actually enjoy or go play badminton or find activities that you can do to achieve your weight loss goal that you enjoy the whole way because you're more likely to do it that way. Wow. Yeah. Um, tricking yourself into doing things that you love so it doesn't mm. feel like a task or it doesn't feel menial. Exactly. It's something I guess is essential. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what are the other steps in, you know, maintaining a goal and accomplishing it? Yeah, so something else that I like to do that a lot of people haven't thought to do before is to set a theme quote for the year. So you have your word that you picked and then find a quote that goes along with it. Because what happens is sometimes you can kind of get lost along the way or you start to feel uninspired, but quotes are very inspiring. And so if you have a quote, then you can put it on your phone, you can put it on the fridge, you can put it on your mirror, so, you know, just throughout the house where you see it, and then it just kind of helps spark that excitement in you again. So I love having a theme quote for the year as well. Another thing to do is to reframe faulty beliefs, because a lot of the sabotage that happens and why we fail is because our mindset is not aligned for us. We have a lot of subconscious beliefs about ourselves that might be negative that get in the way. So, if, you know, if we catch ourselves saying all the time, like, oh, I'm stupid or oh, I'm lazy, then what happens is that our, our brain acts that out for us. So catching ourselves with that negative self-talk and saying, whoa, stop, that is not true. I'm in the process of, of succeeding. I am, you know, I'm a busy, active person. I can do this. Um, you're way more likely to succeed when you put your mindset in a positive frame. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. And can we talk a little bit about manifestation? What are some ways to properly manifest? Is it just saying what it is that you want to do, or is it also putting emotion behind it and actually making steps to actually accomplish those goals? Oh, you know, definitely putting the emotion behind it. That's one of the reasons I love a, a, a word. And if you find a feeling word, you're putting that emotion behind it. So. The law of attraction is, is there's it's, there's a lot of depth to the law of attraction if you don't understand it, but really like our brain does what we tell it to do. It's one of its main purposes is to survive and to keep us alive and from pain. And so, but if we are, te- it does what we tell it to do. So if we're, if we're thinking, I, you know, I'm going to succeed, I'm going to make this much money or um, this much money is going to come to me, then what happens is your brain wakes up in a different way and it starts to notice things that were right there in front of you the whole time. And so then you're more likely to actually achieve it. When you add a vision board in there and you start putting pictures of what you want, I, you know, I want to be at the lake and I want to travel and I want all these things, that really wakes your brain up and it puts it out there so that you're more likely to achieve that and bring it into your life. So Absolutely. Definitely. you got to feel into these things and you need to be, um, you have to believe, you have to have a sense of believing as well to be able to actually move it into reality. That's a really good question. I like that. Thank you. And I love what you said. You know, you have to believe at first. You know, a lot of people, they have this perception that things are going to come just because um, you say it out loud, but you have, you have to put the energy in, you have to put the work in and things will come, but you really have to manifest it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, You know, I can give you a really good example using that word believe. So in 2018, that was actually my word. 
I picked the word believe. And so that whole year was all about learning to believe in myself, believe in who I am as a person, believing in my abilities and um, the goals that I had set for myself. Then 20, 2019, and I achieved that. Like I, I felt so confident. I learned so much about myself. In 2019, the word I chose was abundance. Abundance of all things, abundance of money, abundance of health, abundance of love and good relationships. And so as that unfolded through the year, it was amazing. I was able to save a ton of money. Um, I was on the road to recovery and a lot of my health health problems. I was still didn't quite get to where I wanted to be, but huge leaps and bounds. And then interestingly, 2020 hit and it was COVID. And um, the word I chose for COVID was easy. And the image that I have on my vision board is, you know, the, the, the easy button for the Staples commercial, <laughs> you hit the easy button. So that's my image. <laughs> so all year, if something hard came up, I'm like, Hey, easy button. What's the easy option here? What's the easy choice? How can I, how can I approach this in the easiest way possible? And because I believed in myself this whole year, as things have shifted and changed with my business and with my family and finances, I was like, I've been calm. I'm like, it's okay. I got this because I know I'm a problem solver. I can do this. And because of that year of abundance, I had the money saved. And so I've been totally fine through COVID. And it's actually been the easiest year I've had in a decade. Like it's just been amazing. And so COVID, you know, could be a difficult thing, but my mindset is, it's like totally focused on, no, this year is easy. This is an easy year. And it has been, it's been beautiful. My health is the best it's ever been. One of the things I put on my vision board was, you know, a picture of energy, like the word energy with like electricity and stuff. And my health is like tenfold improved. I have so much energy and, you know, I just put my sights on that. And so when life gets distracting with COVID or, you know, anything that could pop up, I just was like, oh, that's not getting in my way because this is what I'm doing. This is my focus. And I just adapted as needed. So that's how it's that, personally helped me in my life. That is beautiful. Um, it's kind of like when you're driving a car and you start swerving. They say wherever you um, are looking is exactly where the car is going to go yes. despite your efforts. Totally. And I'm amazed. Uh, out of all the words <laughs> from this year, you focused on easy and you manifested it to be easy and you kept reminding yourself and mm -hmm. that isn't a great example I mean sorry that is a great example of how manifesting putting in the energy putting in the work will you know have those things come into fruition absolutely it's easy to get distracted and you know life does have curveballs there are things that you know could come up that get in the way of us succeeding there's obstacles that are going to come up and so it's just a, you have to decide what you're going to do when those come up you know, as long as you have those those visual things and those things in the back of your mind to keep you focused on where you want to go, you're going to succeed. And the thing is, because it's easy, it's one word, you know, like if I have this whole list of things I'm going to accomplish, I'm, I'm likely to forget it and feel overwhelmed, but it's just one word. So as things came up, I'm like, easy, just what's easy? Or I believe in myself, what can I do in this moment? You know, it just makes it so easy, <laughs> again, easy, it just makes it so easy to stay on track. Do you know what I mean? Wow. Yeah. Absolutely. And we're going to go on commercial break and I'm loving, you know, this conversation and I have so many more questions. But sure. for everyone else, if you have any questions, feel free to call up. The number is six three one five six nine four five seven six. That's six three one five six nine four five seven six. Amara and I would love to hear what you guys have to say. And once again, for everyone else, stay tuned. We'll be right back after messages. Hi, I'm Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck. I'm a TV show host right here on RBN TV, and I'm a radio personality on Business Talk. Hi, Amara. It's me, Arthur. Hello. <laughs> I am having a blast with this. Uh, I actually do have some more questions uh, regarding, you know, confidence and success, yeah. and I was going to ask you for the air that um, how are the two combined, if they are combined at all? Can you repeat that again? Oh, yeah, um, confidence and success, and how um, if the two are combined oh. or linked together. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they're kind of intertwined because when you first go to do something, if you don't really have confidence, um, 
if you just persist anyways and keep trying until you get it and have a really good growth mindset, then when you do accomplish it, it's going to improve your confidence. And then because you're more confident, you're going to be more willing to try a few more things that maybe you wouldn't otherwise. And then as you succeed at those things, your confidence just grows and grows. And so it's so it's it's intertwined, right? Like you need confidence to try things to succeed, but you need to succeed. You need confidence. So, you know, if you're not feeling really confident at the moment, I think just try something, just try one small thing. And then when you achieve it, you're going to feel better. You're going to feel a sense of purpose and direction. And with COVID right now, that's the biggest thing. People are not feeling a sense of direction. They're not feeling a sense of accomplishment or passion in their life. And so find something in your home that you can do. Take an on, a little online class on Udemy or any little thing that you can do. Try painting a picture and then you'll feel a sense of confidence and, and su- success. And then it just ri- it's a ripple effect from there. That's a really good question. Thank you. I'm definitely going to ask you that on air. Um, is there anything you'd like me to change or ask you um, as well? No, you're doing great. Actually, I really appreciate how you're doing it. So, yeah. Awesome. So I'm going to put you right back into the board. And then after this commercial is done, we're going to continue on with the conversation. Okay? Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Awesome. Your household. If you're 55 or older or are caring for someone who is, then this book is for you. Go to www.fax lifebook.com and order your copy for you or your loved one today. Or you can call Mary at 614-208-6094 for more information. What you need to know, when you need to know it. The Fact Life Book. Again, I am your host, Arthur Schaefer, and I am with the amazing Amara Prince. She is a life coach, which I'm sure you guys are aware of after our conversation, and she is a therapist at Principality Life Coaching. And without further ado, let's bring her out. Amara, once again, how are you doing? I'm doing amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, thank you. I'm really enjoying this conversation. And right before we went on commercial break, we were having a real amazing conversation regarding, you know, success and making your dreams come into fruition and actually manifesting it into existence. Mm -hmm. And let's follow through with that. You know, does success derive from the confidence that you're able to build through minor successes along the way? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, they really go hand in hand. Um, So when you, when you go to do something, it, sometimes if you don't feel really confident, it might be hard to push yourself to do it or you might second guess yourself. But honestly, like if you just push yourself, just keep trying, just have a growth mindset and keep going until you figure it out and succeed. Then what happens is that improves your confidence because you just accomplished something. You have a sense of fulfillment there. And then what happens is because you feel more confident, you're going to be more willing to try new things that you maybe wouldn't have otherwise. And then it just sort of is a ripple effect from there. Every time you succeed, it improves and, and grows your confidence. Um, that's one thing with COVID that I'm finding right now is people are finding a real lack of direction, of purpose. Um, they just don't know what to do with themselves. And so anything that you can do to take your power back, take charge, find something to do, find something new to try, even if it's just something simple as painting a picture or Take a little short Udemy course um, to learn something new. And what that will do is that's going to spark direction, fulfillment, um, a feeling of success and confidence in you. And then you can try some new things. And it's just it's just a huge ripple effect from there, for sure. Wow. And for people that are you know coming into 2021 with low self-esteem, what are some ways to build confidence? That's a good question as well. Um, one of the things I really work on with people in building confidence is um, getting tapping into who they are as a person and getting really good at their self-talk and owning owning the, who they are. I call them I am statements, actually. So um, making a list, sit, sit down, put your name in the middle of a page, and then write down all the things that you are. So I am kind, I am smart, I am funny, I am creative, I am optimistic, I am... Um, artistic, uh, I'm good at piano, whatever it might be, 
and put it on there. And the thing to remember when you're writing this list is to be in a growth mindset. You don't have to be 100% good at something to be it. So I can, even if I'm only 10% patient, I'm still patient. And so if you put the focus on what you are, you're going to be it more, more, and it will grow within you. So if you keep saying to yourself, I am patient, you're going to grow in that patience. If you keep, if you keep hyper-focusing on what you're not, that's what, that's what takes confidence away. That's what drives us to, to get into self-hate and to negative self-talk. And then that grows as well. If we keep saying, I'm not patient, I'm not patient, your brain processes that and it continues to not be patient, Right. So as you sit there and you own every part of yourself that is good and positive, that will grow within you. And then if someone makes you question that or if they, they think otherwise, you can look at yourself and go, no, because I know this for myself. This is who I am and this is what I have to offer the world. And other people may or may not disagree. That's okay. That's their perception or their opinion. But what matters is my opinion. And so as soon as you really hold on to that, confidence just goes right through the roof. Daily positive self-talk and owning who you are and what you offer the world is just huge. Wow. And can you tell us the difference, um, sorry, can you tell us the difference between confidence versus arrogance? That is an amazing question. So typically people actually have a hard time when I ask them to do that. I'm like, just even write five things. And a lot of people have a hard time because they have this faulty belief that that's, that's arrogant or that that's conceit to say anything nice about yourself. But that's not, that's not what we're going for. So confident confidence is where, you know, your awesomeness, you own it so you can then be it and help lift other people to see and recognize their awesomeness as well. Whereas conceit or arrogance, that is where you're lifting yourself up as a way to, feel better about yourself. And in the process, you're tearing other people down and you're belittling other people as you're trying to lift yourself. And so to, to, to know that you did good on a test is, and be like, yeah, I did do good and feel and compliment yourself. That is where confidence happens. That's where it grows and that's where it builds. And that's okay. That's a good thing. I actually encourage that. The difference with conceit would be, oh yeah, bragging to everyone, I did this, and oh look, you did you did so crappy, and look at me, I'm the best. You know that that's putting other people down to elevate yourself, and that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for that humble, humble knowing of who you are, so you can help other people also see that and be that within themselves. Hmm. Wow. And I guess unfortunately we're kind of running out of time here, mm -hmm. but. How can my audience, you know, get in touch with you and the services that you provide? Yeah, thank you. Um, so my website is the best place to go, www.amaraprince.com. I'll spell my name, A-M-A-R-A, -A -A, and Prince, P-R-I-N-C-E. All right. Thank you once again for coming on and having this conversation, especially regarding things that are relevant. You know, we're talking about New Year's resolutions, we're talking mm -hmm. about people manifesting their dreams, we're talking about changing our life. And everyone, everyone listening in can relate to that. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It was great talking with you. All right, and for everyone else, do stick around. We'll be right back after these messages. You are listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level.